Don in London, hello, it's July 7th. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour, or both. My addictive substance, alcohol, my behaviour, equally addictive around people, places and things. Behaving as if I needed to be perfect to be part of life. And always feeling somewhat less than, maybe. So, somebody eager to fit in, take the edge off, and drink and hopefully make life work. Well, life worked for a long time. But I don't know that I ever really understood some of my feelings because they were always fixed in some way. Fixing on drinking, people, places and things. That was me. In the right place, with the right people, doing the right things and having the right things. A very, very interesting life, but at the same time a life which was missing quite a lot because under the influence I never knew my emotional condition too well and I never really stayed in the moment of now too much I was always moving on to the next thing and it got me down in the end and after many many years of hard work two careers careering all over the place I was caught up in a breakdown and had to work through that breakdown and see what life could be at the end of it. Looking back it was not that simple. I was stuck in a mad place where anxiety, fear just crippled me for at least two years. An anxiety state it was called. And then to try and cope again, cope with life, I started drinking. And this time when I started drinking there was no stopping. And very very quickly my life became a park bench pretty much with nothing other than a head full of alcohol and abject misery and nowhere to turn and when I got to the place of nowhere to turn I found freedom at last a moment of clarity life could get no worse why not start again and why not start again with nothing and see what could happen if something could happen so I asked for help more than once and it took me a while to realize that self-will would always let me down because willpower is run on an inner resource as in my case completely undermined by alcohol and a real desire to fit in so matter, no matter what I did I was trying to emulate something I was or be something I was from the past these days, more in the moment of now, in the moment of now, counts, where I can make choices to be sober, and if I'm worried or concerned and or fearful, I can ask for help. And so sobriety is the foundation of what follows, which is emotional and physical and spiritual connection to life. Emotional, where my feelings fit at the moment, spiritual is the ability to see and cope with reality and physically to be as best I can be given my circumstances, my age and three chronic conditions I deal with on a daily basis. And it makes me smile because I don't know how I would have coped if I was drinking. Indeed I feel life would have ended quite a lot sooner. So what helps me on a daily basis? Well, family, friends, community and a fellowship and that fellowship is AA, Alcoholics Anonymous. I share about AA, but I do not represent anyone or anything in the fellowship because everyone in the fellowship is unique and authentic on their own life path where they are now. Getting sober or are sober, or maybe many years sober, so I do not represent anyone but me. But I need to share about how AA helped me because I was asked because it gives a message of experience, strength and hope which is really what the fellowship is there to do <coughs> and make sure that people understand that there is a way out of addiction recovery on a one day basis after all we only live in the present moment so a one day basis seems quite appropriate sober one day at a time so what is AA? I share the AA preamble from this little card which is available from most AA meetings and this is how it goes 
Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. Help and support. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. So that's it. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. And I just put in there, there are no rules, laws or regulations in AA. Because we know rules, laws and regulations will put us back out there and diminish the opportunity to find sobriety. Yes, there are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions, so we're not beholding to anyone. AA is not allied with any sex, denomination, politics, organisation or institution. Does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes, and certainly doesn't approve or dis disapprove of my videos, per se. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. So it's about m membership, a desire to stop drinking, and sharing a message of experience, strength and hope. And the message of experience, strength and hope is much about the 12 steps <coughs> to make life work, or rather not to make life work, to live life so it works. And 12 steps of action to be taken by an individual. And these can't be done overnight. So it's not about fixing ourselves, it's about living and learning again. Having the humility, the capacity to keep on learning, making mistakes, feeling the frustration, the heat of failure as much as the, the coolness of success, and the excitement that can come with living sober one day at a time. After all, if we don't have to fix anymore, we find out what our feelings are, how we feel about the present moment, so we have our emotional and spiritual well-being on track. Spiritual does not mean it's going to be a bed of roses. Spiritual means coping with reality. It is what it is. And that sort of is the, uh, the focus of me and my, my situation today. But before I go there, and I just want to read a bit about step seven, which I picked up. I don't know where I got it from, but it's not my words, but words I've heard and, and found. It says this, step seven, the seventh step is where we make the change in our attitude which permits us, with humility as our guide, to move out from ourselves towards others and toward God, or good conscience as I come to understand. So we move outward from ourselves towards others where we can hear the wisdom, experience, strength and hope from others and to find, if we can find the truth of today, understand how to love and be loved back and gain some wisdom, we're on track. The whole emphasis of step seven is on humility. It is really saying to us that we ought, not should, we ought to be willing to try humility in seeking the removal of our shortcomings, just as we did when we admitted that we were powerless over alcohol and came to believe a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. If that degree of humility could enable us to find the grace by which such a deadly obsession could be banished, then there must be hope of the same result respecting any other problem we could possibly have. So if I understand that I am powerless over alcohol and life will get unmanageable again if I try to do it, drink, the same applies to obsessive behaviour and attitudes. I am powerless over people, places and things and when I recognise that, that I can probably find my path, freedom to choose based on life and reality, the reality of my situation, freedom to choose and have choices around the possible of life, what's possible, then life keeps working because I have the humility. And the AA daily reflection, which is probably the backbone of many a person's daily reflections, this one, daily reflections, focuses on step seven in July, which is all about looking at our shortcomings. In my case, I need to develop on a daily basis humility to keep on learning and improve my courage, faith and confidence to meet reality as it is. So my shortcomings can be a lack of faith, a lack of courage, 
a lack of confidence because it's undermined by fear. So yesterday was very interesting and this is what I've put for yesterday. The phrase, it is what it is, comes to mind. That is, life is what it is. Frustration as my bank freezes my account until I can prove who I am. Today it feels like a minor inconvenience. Back then in the day when I was drinking, it was a personal attack on my integrity, an outrage and an abomination. Today it is safety. Humility and step seven help me today. Because I'm not being singled out for special treatment. I did make one or two payments over the last couple of days which were out of the ordinary for me. I live quite frugally, so when, <laughs> when I pay uh, a large amount out in terms of rent and tax, and then try and buy sell something else in a different part of the capital of London, my bank says, hang on a minute, this is out of the normal spending pans. So I got stuck about 10 miles away from where I live. And had it not been for a few coppers or pennies in my bag, <laughs> I would have been stuck. So I can smile at it now. But I did ring up a couple of times just to say, are you sure I really need to go to the bank and prove exactly who I am? And they said, well, we'd much prefer you did. So I'm going to do that. And I have to smile because in the past I would have been on the phone all day long trying to argue, why me? And what have I done? And the answer is I haven't done anything. If there's something not quite right about my bank account, I'd rather be told about it rather than argue about it. And from previous years, and letting go of it, going on with uh, the daily reflection. Oh no, I'll do the daily reflection first. And letting go of it for 7th of July. Primarily fear that we would lose something we already possessed or would fail to get something we demanded. Living upon a basis of unsatisfied demands, we were in a state of continual disturbance and frustration. Therefore, no peace was to be had unless we could find a means of reducing these demands. In other words, wanting, wanting and wanting, rather than covering our needs and living life as it is. The difference between a demand and a simple request is plain to anyone. But not when you're drinking it's not, because you're angry, frustrated and still stuck in the malady, where life is just beyond us and we want to try and control it. And what does drink do? It narrows down the world to the size of our heads and our insecurities. So we may feel big in our own head and minds, as ego dictates and fear fuels, but we're not actually seeing the big picture of what's out there. But it goes on to say, peace is possible for me only when I let go of expectations. And many people say, and I've heard it said many a time, expectations are resentments under construction. So these days, expectations, I try and set them to zero, either in the morning when I start off, and especially when I get frustrated by the bank, in terms of getting something I need to improve my mobility. I have to say, expectations are better set to zero on this one, rather than c create resentments which will keep me awake all night. So I'm very pleased to say I didn't stay awake all night. When I'm trapped in thoughts about what I want and should be coming to me, I'm in a state of fear of anxious anticipation, and this is not conducive to emotional sobriety. I must surrender over and over to the reality of my dependence on God, or good conscience, and the wisdom of other people. For then I find peace, gratitude, and spiritual security. And peace, gratitude come from accepting life on life's terms. And spiritual security is just seeing reality as it is. You know, these times are tough right now, and whatever is going on is going to be tough for everybody. So I'm not being singled out, why me, or poor me. It's just me, and the rest of the world is having a difficult time. And then previous years, and letting go of it. I was entitled, deserved, worked for it, my place in the big picture. Back then, driven always, work to perfection, live in distraction, stuck in oblivion. Letting go wants and expectations. No fear, as needs are met one day at a time. Life becomes what life can be today. Or this phrase, it is what it is. 
12 steps all day every day principles to be open honest and willing the closer we can be to seeing and living the truth of now living in the truth of now the better our choice is when we accept life is difficult we feel the joy and sadness in our feelings right size and human size our courage and faith with us today which is enough faith and courage to keep on going when life is difficult and believe you me life will be difficult today because the extra exertion of going out and getting to where I got to and then the difficulties of getting back and then the difficulties following getting some food in I broke into my piggy bank uh, and wandered down the road with some a uh, lot of change pennies and coins and uh, fortunately my local supermarket said when I said you know I've got a lot of change in order to buy what I need to buy today because my bank has frozen my account they said money is money and sometimes they, if people are feeling a bit under the weather with their feelings they say I'm not counting all that bugger off <laughs> and that can happen but the good news is it didn't happen quite like that today or rather yesterday and this morning it's going to be rainy unpleasant but I need to get a component for my bicycle because it won't work without and I need to get the component before I can get it there to be repaired so not only will I have to get it repaired I will need to then take the bike back as well so it's going to be somewhat challenging over the next 24 hours sorting out getting the bicycle in for repair and then a few days without but that's alright that's just the way it is why should I be any different to anyone else it's frustrating and of course I'm going to be in pain today overdoing it in footwork causes me quite a lot of difficulty but I'm not really I don't mind I don't know if that's the right way of putting it I don't mind actually because I will achieve something I'll achieve and get things done without kicking and screaming without saying the world's against me without saying it's all about me it's not and I didn't even feel embarrassed when my card was refused in the shop I just rang up the bank who weren't satisfied with my explanations <laughs> they weren't satisfied and I don't blame them because I didn't have all the right details right to hand I had all the right passwords and everything else but that's not the point I didn't have identity, proof of identity I'm smiling but I did feel it for a few moments I didn't feel the burn of um, shame or guilt which is a good sign but I did feel frustrated and that's an even better sign it was right sized for the moment of what was going on so the humility to keep on learning make sure your bank has all the right detail all the right identity criteria and I need to store them somewhere safe in my head where I can remember them so I don't go through the next rigmarole again I don't mind if I have to do that either enough when all these things are going right or wrong what happens? well the serenity prayer can help me at any time whether I believe or don't believe in a higher power God I do actually God is for me this is it and you, you, anyone can develop their own understanding of their own God in their own lives it's not to be an exclusive God God only works for one person indeed or we work for God God is truth, love and wisdom for me which are universal principles of life to the good of good conscience truth, love, wisdom and needs met, wants forgotten that's all about step 7 and humility so the serenity prayer which saves me from myself most often is the can do, can't do and wisdom to know the difference so to God or in good conscience grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference always for me in the moment and just for today